Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good, yourself? Good, good. Okay, so last year's team kind of started out, they were a bit of an underdog, and you went 29 and six, mm -hmm. uh, won the Big Ten regular season and tournament titles. But how do you personally define success when it comes to a successful team, a successful yeah. season? Well, the, the main thing is the process. Like everybody wants to, to jump into something and you have, you have to start all over. You know, it's when somebody goes from Algebra 1 to Algebra 2 in the first six weeks was last year's, you know, last six weeks. Sure. And they wonder why, how, how that is. A lot of people don't carry on their habits, especially on the defensive end, like through the summer. And that's something that we try to do right away is just everybody's on the same page in terms of your, your language, your vernacular, and what you do, and just so you know what you're doing. And, and so like that's the, that's the piece of basketball that makes it beautiful, is that when everybody plays together and they play the right way, people enjoy watching you. And I think that's something that we really try to do. Now, when you get into recruiting and you get into different stuff, like every kid wants you know, to play shortstop and lead off. Yeah. And that's just not the way it works. But I always talk to him about if you put yourself in a position where you're one of our top two or three players, you know, now we're going to run a lot of stuff for you. So you look at Jay Nivey or Carson Edwards or Zach Eady, they put themselves in such a great position. Trace Jackson Davis for Indiana was in such a great position there. Well, everybody wants that role, but you, you know, you have to be able to earn that role. So I really talk about that openly with them because now when you play, you're going to have to play and really help that player out, whether that's offensively or defensively, because they're your best guy or your best guys if you got multiple guys that are in that position. So that is really important. If you can build on that right away and have that role definition, and then everybody starts to understand at the same time, we're going on an overseas trip this summer, so that's going to be really important for us to gel. Zachary's not going to play with us on that trip because he's going to play for the Canadian national team in the World Cup. So that experience will be for him. He's the only college player on the Canadian national team. So um, really defining success is, is really get everybody on the same page and doing your best. I know that's a little hokey, like you're putting a kindergartner on the bus and just say, hey man, like try your best. But when it gets down to it, players get pulled in a lot of different directions about what they should do. Basketball is really not that hard of a sport. So everybody has an opinion about it. Well, you can watch an NFL football game and a lot of people out here don't understand some things that are going on where a college basketball game is not real difficult. So it's hard to get guys to understand, hey, we got to sacrifice. We got to do what's best for the team. And so that role definition is really there. So being successful for us, obviously, you want to win every single game, and you're just that hasn't happened, you know, for 45 years in college basketball. So um, you're just going to keep trying to get better and keep putting yourself in good situations, and uh, and just learn from your mistakes. Speaking of Zach, what was that moment like when you found out he was coming back? Well, he was with a good agent, so like I just backed up out of it because he was talking to someone that was very knowledgeable that's been in the sport for 35, 40 years, that has a lot of clients, understands the business. But at the end of the day, it's hard for our fans to understand like, well, what did you want him to do? And you just want what's best for him. Right. You're, you know, you're like when you get older, like you're, you're envious to a degree because you wanted to be in that position as a player. And obviously I wasn't as good as he was. So when your players are in those positions, you know, if they can hit it and that's the best thing for them, they need to do it. And but if it's not, the thing with Zach is this will be his coming this year, will be a seventh year of organized basketball. His first year was as a sophomore in high school. So the environment that we've provided at Purdue, he's really improved. You could argue he was the most improved player in the country last year, too. And so, like, why get out of that environment? He was going to get NBA money, but he was going to be probably be in the G League. So where can you improve the most to where you can have that long NBA career? And then obviously he picked coming back to college. So now you have all five starters returning. What are you looking forward to most for this upcoming season? Yeah, you know, having starters returning that doesn't mean they will all start. Um, so, like, I always keep things open. Obviously, I think it's a pretty good crack at it that he'll start. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I just try to keep that as open as possible. Anybody that kind of names their starters in the summer, I don't think you're being fair to people that are working on their game and trying to get better and trying to improve. Um, but, you're, you know, I think we're going to have more than five starters, and I think that's what a good team is about. And so getting to the summer and just working on those things and getting better. And, um, you know, we were 22 and one um, at one time last year. We're the number one ranked offense in the country. And then we ended up 12th. 
We missed a lot of open shots. So your job as a coach is to generate good shots. And so if you're getting those and you're not making them, you know, that, that, that's a struggle when you were making them before. You know, you got to have belief in your players, but you also got to understand from a team standpoint, they're just taking so much away from him. So our ability to make shots is going to be really important. Um, where we've struggled in the NCAA tournament has been kind of the same thread. It's been high volume threes, low percentage, and then turning the basketball over too much. And so you, you got to be able to get into the tournament and keep giving yourself a chance. We were one of the best rebounding teams in the country. So like turning the basketball over just kills you because a missed shot a lot of times is a positive when you got guys like Mason Gillis and Trey Kaufman and Caleb First and Zach Eady, you know, around the basket. So Indiana Sports Corp is holding their second annual Indy Classic at Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indy on, in December. We're battling Arizona on December 16th. What was it like playing last year in the inaugural game? You know, it was for us, once again, we, we struggled shooting in that game. So like trying to find a way from, from defense and rebounding. I think we were three for 25 from three in that game, which is horrific, obviously. Um, so there's a lot of rebounding opportunities there. But our guys were able to hang in that game and play, you know, obviously play in Davidson um, and, and just defend and grind it out. Whereas the year before, we really talked about it. Like, I don't know if we would have won that game. You know, we were very talented the year before. We weren't the toughest team the year before, even though we had a really good season then also. And I thought that team last year was tougher and they were able to grind that game out. But just a great environment. Anytime you can get against quality opponents on a neutral court, you know, that's what you want to be able to do. And obviously, for two years in a row, we've been undefeated non-conference, but still playing a tough schedule. But that's going to be a tall task for us this year because playing teams like Arizona and Alabama and going to the Maui um, is going to be difficult. We also play Xavier at home in the Gavit games. What's it like playing in Indy, though? You got to feel a little bit of right. love there, right? Oh, no question. No question about it. Like, we want to keep doing that. And that was something, you know, with the Crossroads Classic, that wasn't on us. Like, you know, we, even though um, our record wasn't great in it, I thought it was great because you're playing two quality teams in Butler and Notre Dame. That was some other teams, you know, in that that, that, that spoiled that for everybody. But um, just trying to be honest. Um, <laughs> And, and it didn't make any sense to me because if you can, it's so hard in scheduling. Like if you have a good team or like, it, it's really hard. People don't understand how much you hear no when you're trying to schedule teams and get teams places. So if we can get a quality team in Indianapolis like Arizona this year, I mean, that, that is fabulous. But it was just, you know, built in. You know, Butler's got a great program. Notre Dame's got a great program. That just worked for us. Obviously, Indiana was there playing, alternating with us playing there. It just made sense to continue that. So that, 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 that didn't add up for me because you're always trying to build your resume, but you're always trying to do right by your own fans. And if you can get in your state capital and play it in Indianapolis, that just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. It was a blast last year. So a lot of people in this crowd are probably leaders. Um, what kind of leadership advice do you have? You know, you've been leading this successful team right. for many years. I just be yourself, like be authentic. And when things don't go right, you know, take it. I, I think that's first and foremost. Like, you know, you get into with young people and a lot of things that go on, like just own your part of it. You know, anytime like something doesn't go right as a coach, you're constantly on them. Like that's just that's that's coaching or whatever. But when you know deep down that you're the one that made the mistake, like make sure you own that right there because now that's what you wanted to do. Like you own things, you fix things. It's real easy. But when the leader doesn't act that way or the leader always passes the buck, you're not going to get anywhere and people aren't going to want to work for you. Absolutely. Anything else I missed? Anything you want to highlight? No, you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I paid him to say that. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. All right, time. thank you. Thank you.